All right, today we are going to talk about false prophets. I'm going to give you a bunch of scriptures that are going to be very, very important. Uh, as time goes by, there are more and more of these false prophets just springing up from everywhere, which is what the Bible says would happen. But I'm going to tell you how to spot them today. All right, some of the warning signs that the Lord gave us in His Word, the King James Bible, that hasn't been changed by the Mandela Effect or any other stupid satanic nonsense that witches come out with. Okay, <laughs> I have to just kind of preface it with that. Uh, nobody's going to change this book. Ain't going to happen. Okay, uh, I mean, the Catholics have been trying for, you know, the last, since 1881 with the Westcott and Hort uh, perversion and all the other ones that they've come out with. But uh, there's those of us that are still led by the Holy Spirit, and we understand that the King James Bible is God's perfect word, preserved, not going to be changed. All right. Again, we've proved it. I proved it in my study. Showed you proof after proof after proof. The Mandela Effect thing is a complete hoax. Don't fall for it. So, but I want to talk to you today about how to spot false prophets. It's going to be very important. We're going to start out in Luke chapter 6. There are some traits that false prophets will have every single time you can count on it. And uh, those traits are things that uh, you need to be on the lookout for. It's very important. Luke chapter 6, verse 20. We'll start there. And he lifted up his eyes on his disciples and said, Blessed be ye poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are ye that hunger now, for ye shall be filled. Blessed are ye that weep now, for ye shall laugh. Okay? Verse is a comfort there. You go through rough things and rough times as a Christian. I've been through my share of plenty of those. And, uh, you know, the, the devil's going to attack you sometimes and, and just, it's going to be rough. But uh, it's a blessing to go through those things as a Christian, to see the trials and things, and to know there's going to be a day when we're going to look back at this and we're going to say, that meant nothing. The re I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. If you saw my study on uh, depression. If you haven't, watch it. But uh, verse 22 says here, Blessed are ye when men shall hate you, and when they shall separate you from their company, and shall reproach you, and cast out your name as evil for the Son of Man's sake. Rejoice ye in that day, and leap for joy, for behold, your reward is great in heaven. For in the like manner did their fathers unto the prophets. Now notice something. We're going to see the contrast here. The prophets of God, right? And you don't have to be especially called prophet of uh, spirit of prophecy and whatever else. All right, this book, the testimony of Jesus, is the spirit of prophecy. All right, we have been given a more sure word of prophecy, the Bible says. So just reading and believing this book, we can see what's coming in the future. You don't have to receive special visions from God and God, you go into some kind of trance or something and, and God shows you what's going to happen three weeks from the day or something. No, 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 no. As Bible-believing Christians, we have a more sure word, written word of prophecy. All right. That's why, again, these witches and the other Satanists are trying to attack this book. Because this book spells out their doom. And if you're a witch out there, or some atheist, or some other fool out there, I suggest you get saved very quickly. Because time is running out. All the things that this book prophesies are going to happen in the future, they're happening. You better think about that. But God's prophets are spoken against. God's prophets, their names are cast out as evil. There's evil reports brought out against them. You know, YouTube exposés done on their ministries, you know? Know what I mean? But let's continue. Verse 24, But woe unto you that are rich, for ye have received your consolation. Woe unto you that are full, for ye shall hunger. Woe unto you that laugh now, for ye shall mourn and weep. Boy, truer words are never spoken right there. Oh, you can laugh at the preachers. The preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, the Bible says over in 1 Corinthians chapter 1. You can laugh at us right now. You can mock us. You can say, oh, look at your funny posters and all oh, you have the AV 1611 thing there. And oh, look at you this. And you look at that. Ha, 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 ha. Yo, you're dumb. You're so stupid. And, and uh, all this stuff that the atheists say. Laugh now. Laugh now. You're going to weep and mourn. You're going to weep and mourn in the not too distant future. This world is about ready to explode into world war and economic chaos and natural disasters and everything else. I mean, it's already happening. Just continue to live in your little fantasy world that things are getting better. Okay? That's what you have to do as an atheist or whatever else. 
Just keep telling yourself it's getting better when you see the news and saying it's getting worse. All right, do that. But uh, verse 26, very important verse. Woe unto you when all men shall speak well of you, for so did their fathers to the false prophets. You see the contrast? Verse 23, well, verse 22 and 23, you're blessed when people hate you and they cast out your name as evil and you're persecuted for the Son of Man's sake. They did that to the prophets. Verse 23, woe unto you when all men shall speak well of you, for so did their fathers to the false prophets. If you see anybody, anybody being covered by mainstream media in a positive light, be it magazines like Time, People, whatever, like that, or the news media, or their books being recommended, New York Times bestseller list, or something like this, false prophet. You say, but, 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 but what about to false prophet? False prophet. And this, there's this uh, Jonathan Kahn guy. He's not going to be in the second part of this study. Because the second part, we're actually going to be looking at some of these people online. And I'm going to be showing you why they're false prophets. I'm going to be naming names, showing faces, the whole fun thing. But uh, this Jonathan Kahn guy. Oh, a lot of what he says sounds really good. Why is he on the New York Times bestsellers list? And then, you know, one minute he's sounding fundamental and he's giving addresses at the White House and things like this, you know, or wherever that was, the one prayer, national prayer breakfast thing goes. Um, and then he's on the Jim Baker show, and I'm going, okay. <laughs> False prophet. False prophet. You need to watch out for that. And I'll be saying some more things about the thing of uh, men speaking well of you. Another thing that you're going to see, go back in your Old Testament to Jeremiah. Chapter 14, uh, I actually have another study I'm going to be doing. Um, I'm not sure which one of these two is going to be released first, but I had another sermon prepared. I mean, I got the notes done and everything for it. And I literally, it, the Lord has put this thing on my heart, and I pencil wrote my other notes for this study. And it's just like the Lord is just pushing me right now, saying this thing needs to come out. It's very, very, very important, very time-sensitive. Uh, we got a lot of rain last night, and we actually have the basement is flooding right now, and I'm, I have pumps taking care of it and stuff, you know, electric pumps, and, and it's like I got a mess down there to clean up, and it was like, I got to do this, I got to fix this, and it's just like, this this sermon is so important that I'm literally just like, okay, you know what, Lord, take care of that thing, and He has, the rain has stopped outside, praise the Lord, and it's like, this comes first, and then the other stuff, because... I'm seeing the false prophet thing exploding, and as I was doing the research in the second part of the video where I'm actually online showing some of this, I had no idea it was that bad. That's why I'm just like, everything else goes to second place. <laughs> I mean, it's important. Jeremiah 14, verse 14, Then the Lord said unto me, The prophets prophesy lies in my name. I sent them not. Neither have I commanded them, neither spake unto them. They prophesy unto you a false vision and divination. Notice that one. And a thing of naught and the deceit of their heart. What is divination? Divination is being able to foretell the future through occult powers. And some of it works to a certain extent, greater or lesser extent there. Because devils can see some things that people can't. So, you got to be very, very, very careful when you hear about word prophets or special, I'm a prophet and this guy's a prophet and he's been called by God as a, as a special ministry of prophecy and these things like this. you got to be real careful about that. Very, very, very careful. And like I said, we're going to be naming some people in the second part. But uh, you see it there. And it's interesting because if you read the surrounding verses, these prophets, false prophets, are actually prophesying that things are going to get better when they're going into war. And you say, well, do people do that today? Well, some do. Some of the charismaniac, you know, prosperity types, they'll teach that things are getting better. But uh, there's also a new kind of a thing coming out, and that is that these false prophets are saying, no, things are actually going to get worse, meaning you're going to go into the time of Jacob's trouble. And they're, and they're putting out all this stuff, getting people messed up doctrinally. Just terrible, terrible stuff. 
like I said, this is an important study. Matthew chapter 7. So in other words, you're not to just believe people when they come out and they say, God, I had this vision and I saw this thing and you know whatever this angel came and showed me this and showed me that and told me these things you got to compare everything with this book here's another way that you spot a false prophet Matthew chapter 7 beginning in verse 15 beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing but inwardly they are ravening wolves they try to look like Christians they will pretend that they are Christians specifically because they are ravening wolves, they want to destroy you. It's interesting to me that a lot of the atheists will do that. They'll come in a lot of times and they'll fake and they'll act like they really care about the Bible or they really care about Christians or they'll just totally lie to people and deceive people because they're trying to destroy people's, people's faith. I mean, if I was truly an atheist, I wouldn't waste one time, one second of my day with religion. I wouldn't waste any time with it. A bunch of kooky people want to believe in some God or something like this, something that I can't see. If I was an atheist, I'd say, that's your problem. Whatever. I'm going to go out and do whatever I feel like doing with my life. I mean, I've done some really exciting things in my life. and you know, I'm a motorcyclist and, and hunting, fishing, hiking, camping, kayaking. There's so much stuff to do. What on earth are you doing on YouTube watching religious videos Posting stupid comments. It's weird. Weird people. Ravening wolves. Verse 16. Ye shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bring every excuse me, every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know them. What are the fruits of ministries that are out there? Do you look at a ministry and see people coming away from that ministry as soul winning, Bible believing, praying, having answers to, to you know depression issues and, and whatever else? Is there life changing good fruit that comes from a ministry? Or the people getting messed up and, and getting worse and worse and worse. I mean, yes, we are supposed to look at things and say, okay, I see what's going on and I understand this is bad and I understand that's bad. But brethren, we're also supposed to have joy. And joy doesn't mean that you're just walking around like you're on some kind of happy drug or something and just, uh, just like some kind of Teletubby or something, okay? Uh, no, you're... You're going to have times of, of anger, righteous indignation. You're going to have times of just like, I just can't believe this. I've been doing this for years. I had no idea it was bad. You're going to have some of that. But in the midst of it, you can turn right around and say, but you know what? The Lord's in control. I know that the Lord Jesus Christ is going to take care of this thing in His timing, according to His will. And I thank Him for saving me. I thank Him for giving me that blessed assurance that I'm going to be going to heaven when I die, that he's got this whole system worked out. Praise the Lord. We have that. Lost people don't. And if a ministry is real, if it's legitimate, it's going to produce good fruit. It's going to give joy to Christians. Even when there's bad news that comes out and things, and oh man, it's really bad, bad news update or whatever else, we still have joy. We still have the blessed hope. See, real Bible-believing Christians believe in the catching away of the body of Christ before the time of Jacob's trouble because the Scriptures teach it. Well, John Nelson, John Nelson Darby was not the founder of that doctrine. The Lord Jesus Christ was and his book, the King James Bible. Absolutely a teaching of Scripture. Completely a teaching of Scripture. And I dare say, if you are worshiping a God that's going to put you into a time of judgment when you haven't done anything wrong, you're worshiping a different God than the one that's in this book. Better think about that. Next, we're going to go to Matthew 24. Matthew 24, verse 11. If, you, if you're not familiar with this, many people are, but I'll just 
thought I'd go to this one quick. Matthew 24, verse 11 says, And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. Talking about the end times. All right, it's not going to be, well, yeah, there's some there with the great falling away, the great apostasy of the last days of the church falling apart. The time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, you know, that whole thing. Um, yeah, there, but then after the rapture, then the false prophets kind of go away. And Oh, no, no, no. Um, it gets worse and worse and worse and goes into the time of Jacob's trouble. It's real bad. Very, very, very bad. I mean, the Antichrist himself is a false prophet. He's a false Christ, a counterfeit Christ. Incredible. Next, go to 2 Corinthians chapter 11. You say, well, well but Brother Brian, I, I know so-and-so, and, and, you know, I, I, you know, Paul's this one and went and watched the second one, and you name some people that I, I think that they're good people. They mean well. I mean, they look like nice people. Uh-huh. Remember this, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 13. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. Look out, by the way, for anybody calling themselves an apostle today. There are no apostles today. Paul talked about the signs of an apostle being wrought. And some of these charismaniac nuts out there, oh, I'm an apostle and things like this. You're not an apostle. You couldn't perform the sign gifts of an apostle if your life depended on it. You know, lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Okay, go down to the hospital. Let's see it. They can't do it. They have to do it in their uh, church, <laughs> you know, where they can work things out. And they can speak in tongues. We'll be seeing that in the second part. And uh, oh, I, I speak in tongues, you know, and, and I got the initial evidence of the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I uh, know you got possessed with a devil. All right. Look out for anybody calling themselves an apostle. Verse 14, and no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. Yeah. So, don't think to yourself, oh, so-and-so looks like a nice, clean-cut person. They, look, they, they do read from the Bible occasionally, and they seem like a very nice person. So they must be. That's not the standard. Not the standard at all. And by the way, any ministry out there, you need to be able to judge their fruits. You need to be able to judge what they say. Listen to their testimony. And, you know, I don't have my actual, you know, written out, you know, whatever testimony. Uh, I, I had it years ago, and it's like, you know, I was kind of confused as to the timing of my salvation. And uh, I thought it was, you know, when I was a boy in Sunday school. No, no, it wasn't. Um, my salvation came when I was 25 years old. And when I was finally through with my self-righteousness. Um, and I realized I'm a sinner. And I deserve to go to hell. And uh, I came to the Lord in that broken, contrite, repentant spirit. And I just said, I just, uh, what is the point of life, Lord? You know, I just, I want to know you. I want to know the truth. You know, there's a desire for truth that comes after salvation. All right, uh, just a voracious appetite for knowing the truth. You'll see that. So, and it's completely scriptural. Again, we aren't going to go into a big thing on that. But that's just the, the short testimony of mine. I came to the Lord broken in repentance. I said, I'm a sinner. I deserve to go to hell. I know I do. And I'm sick and tired of living in this life of sin. Please save me and then help me to get rid of those sins. Help me to live a life that's pleasing in your sight, Lord. And you say, well, then you've lived a perfect life. No, oh no, I sin still. But I struggle, that struggle there, that's there with the sin and, and my flesh, my sinful flesh versus the spirit, that struggle wasn't there before I got saved. I just did whatever I felt like doing while professing to be a Christian. Yeah, just like the easy believism crowd out there. According to them, I was saved as a wicked, professing Christian that did all kinds of wickedness and all kinds of sin while professing to be saved and going to church buildings. Uh, but then when I actually got saved for real and my life changed, then these easy believism heretics out there say, well, then you lost your salvation, apparently. 
because I was an easy believer in them before, and then when I truly got saved and repented, then it's like, oh, now you've lost it. You're not really saved. You're not a real convert. People are mentally ill. But let's go to the next one. You want a scripture saying that you're to judge people? Judge these uh, spirits? And this is also another important thing which I'll be kicking here. But 1 John chapter 4, verse 1 says here, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are going out into the world. You see the connection? Trying the spirits that are in the false prophets. Many false prophets there. So somebody comes to you and they say, you know, whatever, and I'll be getting into this here as we continue, but some of the things that they're going to say. Um, but they come and they say something. You don't just go, oh, wow, you know, and the guy says, God told it to me. Michael the archangel showed up and he said this to me and said that to me. You go, wait a second. Okay, well, let's look at the places where Michael the archangel spoke here in the New Testament or in the Bible anywhere. And let's just, let's read it and see if it's consistent with what this guy just said. That's what you do. But look at verse 2. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that it should come, and even now already is it in the world. All right, The spirit of Antichrist is, has always been there. Right, go back to the first century when this was written. That spirit of Antichrist, a counterfeit false Christ, such are deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. That spirit has always been there. And it will one day culminate in the actual man of sin, the man who perfectly fulfills the spirit of Antichrist. Okay? The prophesied uh, Messiah of Satan, if you will. But... I want you to notice I made emphasis on two words. One ver word in verse 2, one word in verse 3. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. You see, you say that about a man who's alive. He is alive. Not he has been alive or was alive or something. Uh-uh. Is. And if you use a new version, you might want to look at that wording there in your new version. Because many of them change is to has come in the flesh. Very interesting. They prove that they have a spirit of Antichrist. Right in the context of the verse. But very important. When somebody comes out and they start to say things. I'll give you a good example. Um, well, let me finish what I was saying there. Getting ahead of myself. Somebody comes out and they say something. They say, God told me this. An angel told me such and such. I believe I had this vision. I heard a voice and it said such and such. You say, okay, does what they say line up with the Word of God? That's what a Bible-believing Christian does. You see, we have a standard by which we judge everything. You say, well, I know somebody and they're really a good person and they said God showed them such and such. I don't care if it's your grandmother that loves you and raised you and was always good. I don't care who it is. Your mom, your dad, your husband, your wife. I don't care who it is. If they say something, it needs to match here in the book. I'll give you an example. Uh, years and years ago, um, my family, before I was married and things, my family knew a woman. Her name was Odette Stone. And I was a friend of her son, John, and uh, she was a rather odd woman. And um, she said at one point, uh, just, I mean, she was like Tammy Faye Baker on steroids. I mean, the whole face painted up and everything else. Don't know who that is. You can look it up. Uh, she had issues. But um, she said at one point, she was always all dolled up. She was like a travel agent or something like this and whatever. And she said, God told me that I'm supposed to have silver and gold. And she meant physical silver and gold. Okay, uh, jewelry is what she said, is what she meant by that. And you say, well, uh, how about that? Did God do that? Well, what does the Bible say about that? 
1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 9, But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith, and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. But thou, O man of God, flee these things, and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness. Hmm, I don't think God told her that she's supposed to have gold and silver. Because God would have contradicted his book. God doesn't do that. All right? Somebody comes out and they say, God told me some whatever kind of a vision. We're going to see some here in just a little bit in the second study. Um, God told me and this angel came and he showed me this and he, he told me that and whatever else. Um, does it line up with the Bible? Well, no, but I got a new revelation. Yeah, you got a new revelation from Satan. Don't believe him. All right? Another mark of false prophets. Another thing that you need to be careful about. False prophets are men pleasers. A lot of people will love them. And they will say things that are completely 100% contrary to God's word. You can look it up and you go, I don't see the teachings of that in this book. You know, it's weird. And I'll tell you something else. There's also another little key there. All right? As a Christian, you have a spirit of discernment. The Holy Spirit dwells within you. And you need to trust the Lord. When you get a weird feeling, when you just get kind of a feeling like, oh, like almost like a chill running up your spine, and you just get that creeped out feeling like, Oh, like you feel kind of somewhat, your, your stomach kind of will turn a little bit. You'll get kind of nauseous feeling like, Ugh, you know. I can tell you right now, there have been times I've had that feeling about things and I didn't listen and I went ahead and did whatever else and it messed me up. And I've come to understand when you get a creepy feeling about somebody, you better pay attention. Um, I met a guy years and years ago who was trying to join our house church back way many years ago before I knew my wife. And uh, as, soon as, I, as, soon as, as soon as I met the guy and he started talking, it was just like that feeling of like, oh boy, I got chills and it was like, something's really, really, really wrong here. And found out later that, yeah, there were a lot of things wrong with the guy. A whole lot of things wrong with that guy. I believe he was possessed with devils. I mean, he was, he was something else. I mean, I've gone places that, that uh, you know, I didn't think were bad or anything. I just thought, you know, it was a historical place or whatever. Or going to some other, like a store you walk in and you just feel like a, oh, oh, oh. Learn to trust that. The Holy Spirit will actually give you that spirit of discernment. You will feel that sometimes. And you start listening to somebody on YouTube or listening to somebody wherever, and all of a sudden you get that feeling of like, ooh, something, something isn't right here. Trust that feeling. All right, because most of the time you're going to find out it was from the Lord. But you're not to believe every spirit. Here's another good one. Second Peter. Turn to Second Peter. Chapter 2. Second Peter chapter 2. Actually, we'll go to chapter 1 because I want to cover these verses. I quoted these earlier or, or referred to them, I should say. But we need to go over these. Uh, 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 19. We have also a more sure word of prophecy. It's the book. Whereunto ye do well that ye take heed, as unto a light that shineth in a dark place, until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts. Right? That's, you know, the Lord's... Uh, I mean, you can make that into a lot of different things, but basically I would say it's the blessed hope when we go to be with the Lord. You know, the day dawns. And, you know, when the Lord arises in our hearts, I think it's going to be when we're, you know, that full completion, the, the purchase of the, um, I can't think of how the verse goes. <laughs> My brain's not on this right now. Uh, it's in Ephesians. Let me just look it up quick because I want to make sure I get this quoted right. Um, the redemption of the purchased possession. Yeah, see, I got purchased and I was thinking purchased or redemption. No. The redemption of the purchased possession is what I think is being referred to over here in 
2 uh, Peter chapter 1, verse 19. But uh, look at verse 20. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the Scripture is of any private interpretation. For the prophecy came not in old time, but by the will of man. But holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. All right. Uh, you're not going to have some guy that says, you know, um, God is speaking to me. God spoke to me in a way that you're not going to understand because he only spoke this to me. I'm his special prophet for these end times. And you're going to see some of that in the next video. Um, I'm a special ordained prophet. You say, well, I can't find it in the Bible. Oh, yeah, it's not in the Bible. God, God's given it to me, not to you. No, no, no. We have a more sure written word of prophecy. That's why this King James Bible comes under attack more than any other book in history. But let's go to chapter 2, verses 1 through 3. Another big uh, warning about false prophets. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. And many shall follow their pernicious ways by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. Boy, get a hold of that one. Many shall follow their pernicious ways. Verse 3. And through covetousness shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. They might look like they're getting away with it right now, but the fact of the matter is, their damnation is coming. But they will through covetousness, they will use feigned words to draw you in. They're liars. They're wolves in sheep's clothing. And they will do whatever they have to do to get popularity. You ready for another big one? Especially here on YouTube? You ready? The people that you watch on YouTube, are they monetized? I mean, I want to just talk to you about the Bible today, but before I do, I'd like to hear, have you hear a word from my sponsor, Chevy, Chevy Trucks or something like that. What would you think if I said that? If I said to you, I'm, I'm actually going to be taking on a new sponsor here. I'm going to be taking on the sponsor of Ford or something like this. You know, uh, um, AT&T Wireless uh, is now my sponsor, and I'm just going to give a little promo before I get into my sermons. Would you, would you consider me a real preacher or a fake one? Well, if you had any sense, you'd say, oh, you're fake. Why is it then okay to take money from Google? Hmm? And I mean, I'll show you this, some screenshots here. This is my account here. I'll show it to you. Uh, I'm not monetized. I've never received one cent for any of the videos that I put up. Why? Well, if I consent to do that, they partly own my videos. I'm not here to get paid by Google. The Lord will provide my needs. But I will tell you right now, if you're paid by Google, there's a problem there. And I would be very careful about watching anybody that's getting money, kickbacks from Google. You see, because Google will promote their channel. And I get really weirded out too when I see people that profess to be Bible-believing Christians, and yet they're getting you know, all kinds of views. Their videos go viral. Why? I mean, I've been on, on YouTube for uh, essentially eight years, going on eight years. Uh, November of 2008 is when I first came on. And uh, in that whole time, I'm only up to 16,000, a little over 16,000 subscribers. A couple million views, but I mean, I have over a thousand videos. Hmm. And it's interesting because I have older video out there where I actually showed that Google was putting, you know, ads on my videos without my permission, without my consent. It's kind of weird. But you get some guy that says, I'm going to monetize my account so I get those big views and get the big money. That's a problem. Because you see, all of a sudden you start to get checks from these lost people, Google, you start to get checks in and you start to say, 
Oh huh, boy, wow. That one video did really, really well. I got a couple million views on that video. I should probably do some more of those. So it's not really the Lord telling you what to put out. It's more the uh, almighty dollar. Mammon, you might say. It's a good way to test a preacher. Oh, brother so-and-so, he's such a good man. Oh, he's such a good man. Is he monetized? You better think about that. Finally, we're going to go to Colossians chapter 2. This is going to be rather important for one of the devil-possessed lunatic false prophets that I'm going to be kicking hard in the upcoming study. See, most of you probably have already paused this thing. You're not even going to make it through the whole thing because I keep plugging the other video. <laughs> but uh, you're probably, who, who all is he kicking, you know? Well, I have good reason for kicking all of them. Uh, I'm not going to be doing any kicking of people that I'm not sure of. Colossians chapter 2, verse 18. Another good test of these false prophets in these end times. Let no man beguile you of your reward in a voluntary humility and worshiping of angels, intruding into those things which he hath not seen, vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind. Watch out for these people coming out and saying, an angel showed me this or an angel showed me that, and you look at what they're saying and it doesn't even line up with Scripture. That's very, very dangerous. And I'm going to be kicking a guy in particular on that very subject. Verse 19, And not holding the head, from which all the body by joints and bands, having nourishment ministered, and that together increaseth with the increase of God. If you want to know who the head of the church is, it's Jesus Christ. You can read about that over in Ephesians. Verse 20, Wherefore, if ye be dead with Christ from the rudiments of the world, why, as though living in the world, are ye subject to ordinances? Touch not, taste not, handle not, which all are to perish with the using after the commandments and doctrines of men? What are these people doing? They're saying, God gave me this vision. God gave me this special thing. I saw this angel. He showed up and he told me such and such. And now this is the type other stuff that you need to do along with your salvation. Touch not, taste not, handle not. You need to do all these other things to, to you know, because God's revealed it to me by this from this angel or something like this. They didn't see anything. They're prophesying a lie of their own heart. Like we read back in Jeremiah 14, 14. Verse 23, Which things have indeed a show of wisdom and will worship, and humility and neglecting of the body, not in any honor to the satisfying of the flesh. So Paul's saying, this stuff that they're telling you to do, that this angel showed them, and things like this, those things that they have not seen, they're just lying to you, those things oftentimes will seem like very good things. I mean, you need to do this stuff, you know, we need to, we need to do these special things and stuff to, to crucify our flesh more and whatever else. Yeah. Watch out for false prophets. And there are so many other verses we could go through too, but I'm just trying to get this one done because I want to get to the second one where I actually start to name some people. And there's going to be probably more coming out in the future as well. Um, I mean, one of my jobs as a preacher is... Uh, I need to be able to show people who false prophets are, how to spot them, because people get messed up by these false prophets. And, uh, you know, I need to be able to not only rebuke them myself, but I need to teach you how to spot them. And uh, if you want to look at a couple ways, you know, to sum up this whole thing, um, number one, they're going to be man-pleasers. They're going to be popular with the world. They're going to be worldly. What the Bible says is worldly. All right? Not always. All right? Now, you'll see some of the people in the video coming up, they don't look worldly. They, they look like good conservative Bible-believing people and whatever else, but then they'll look, yoke up with the world and other things, and it's rather peculiar. But you're going to see people that are man-pleasers. They'll do what they have to do, monetize their accounts and whatever else they have to do to get more views. They'll do that. Uh, they're not content with just saying, okay, the Lord's going to prosper this or do whatever else. I mean, you know, I know brethren that have been on YouTube longer than I have, and they have 
just you know two three thousand subscribers or something like this i mean you're not going to be very popular as a bible bible believing christian and when you start seeing people getting millions of views and hundreds of thousands of subscribers that's a problem that's a problem and again you're going to see who i'm kicking in the next study um they're man pleasers they will tell you that they've had visions they've heard angels and God spoke this to me and God spoke that to me and you will feel that feeling of just like Ugh, I don't know about this something sounds wrong and if you if you don't know what I'm talking about watch the second part you'll see exactly what I'm talking about uh, you'll see that they've had visions they've had dreams they've whatever um, and they're after money they're after fame they're after fortune that's another thing with false prophets they will try to come in and deceive gullible Christians and uh, try to get their money from them. Yeah. So I'm going to uh, quit now on this one, and uh, you can watch the second part. Um, but I just, this is such an important study, and the second part, you know, I, I'm going to be naming some people definitely, and, and uh, it just grieves me to see so much deception out there and you know i i want to be able to protect you know people out there that are saved um I've, I've always tried to turn people to the bible the bible is your standard the bible is your final authority everything relies on this book it is the king of the hill so to speak that's why I have this banner up right now you know i bought this for doing some different video ideas i have but all this all the books down here the NIV and Time Magazine, New King James, ASV, New American Standard Version, Life, RSV, NRSV, Nassau, Alon, Metzger, Hort, Hegel, you know, all these church fathers, Associated Press, you know, all these people, all this junk down here is nothing compared to the King James Bible. The AV 1611, the authorized version of 1611. That's the book. And you hold it in your hands, right? You don't need to get a 1611 edition or something. You hold it in your hands if you have a King James Bible. All right, that's the standard. And all these people coming out, oh, God showed me this, God told me this, and whatever else, and people delving into the occult world and all this other stuff, and I mean, really, really deeply delving into it, and to show you special things that God showed them. Be be careful. Again, you know, and you say, well, you do some of that. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. But I always take you back to the book, don't I? Be very careful. 